Today, we are making creme brulee for two. It is the second dessert in our Valentine dessert series. So if you missed the first one, bread pudding for two, make sure you check it out up there. Now, I am a huge fan of creme brulee. And if I go to a restaurant and it is on the menu, you can bet I am going to order it. But you are not gonna believe how easy it is to make at home. This rich, smooth custard dessert topped with a crunchy caramelized sugar topping is to die for. And it's the perfect way to show your Valentine how much you love them. Join me in the kitchen as we make small batch recipes with big taste. Hi, I'm Leanne and thanks for joining me in the kitchen today. Now there's a couple things we need to talk about before we get started making this creme brulee because there's a few tools that you're gonna need. And the first one is a ramekin. Now, I like to use this size ramekin. I'm gonna link to it in the description down below. It is an eight ounce ramekin. It is fluted around the edges and it's about an inch tall. Now, I like this size ramekin because you get the perfect amount of custard to crunchy toppy, topping ratio. Now, if all you have is a six ounce ramekin, you can use it but your bake time is gonna vary, and I found that my edges get a little overdone before the center gets done because it is um, deeper. So go ahead and order yourself some of these off of Amazon. They work, because you're gonna get addicted to making creme brulee, because these work the best. Now the other specialty tool that you may not have that is really helpful in making creme brulee is a kitchen torch. Again, I'm gonna link to that down below. If you don't have one, ask one of your neighbors or your family and see if they have one. Now, I've been told that you can do creme brulee underneath the broiler. I have never tried it, but I'm gonna leave the directions down below so that if you can't get your hands on a kitchen torch, you could try that. You're just gonna have to be really careful and watch it really closely. Now, the other thing we need to talk about as far as creme brulee is concerned is the vanilla that you use because the vanilla is the star of the show in this dessert. So. You have three options, um, and I've used all three of them. You can use a vanilla extract, and you wanna make sure you're using pure vanilla extract. Don't use any of that imitation stuff because you want that pure vanilla flavor. You can also use vanilla paste, which you can find in a lot of grocery stores or specialty baking shops. This works great. You'll use the same amount, a teaspoon or a teaspoon, depending on which one you use. Now, if you wanna make this extra fancy and extra special, you can use a vanilla bean. And actually, you're only gonna need for this small batch version, a half of a um, vanilla bean. Now, these can be a little bit more difficult to find. You can order them off of Amazon. Um, here in Utah, I bought them at Orson Gigi. A lot of specialty baking shops make care of them and sometimes even grocery stores will. So today, because we're gonna make this extra special, um, I'm gonna show you how to use a vanilla bean. And But I will talk you through, if you only wanna use vanilla or vanilla paste, how to do that. Regardless, you're gonna get a delicious creme brulee. So I'm gonna show you how to work with a vanilla bean, okay? It's basically a little pod and we have to slit it open. Now we're gonna put it, uh, take just a sharp knife, a uh, paring knife, something like that, and cut through just the top layer of the pod. We don't wanna cut all the way through. We're just gonna cut through the top and then we are going to open it up. All right, and then it should just open right up and inside are where all those little seeds are. If you've ever um, had something with vanilla bean in it, you'll know there'll be little black specks. Well, that is the vanilla bean. So I've opened up the bean, and then I'm just gonna take the tip of my knife and scrape out all the little seeds that are in there. You can see they'll come out on the tip of my knife. You wanna make sure that you get them all out, because that is what is gonna give your creme brulee all that vanilla goodness. All right, after we have our vanilla bean scraped out, we are gonna take just a small saucepan. Now, creme brulee only has five ingredients, okay? We're gonna use some heavy whipping cream. Heavy whipping cream is also important. Use the heavy stuff, you're gonna get the best flavor. And we're going to use three egg yolks. Now, for those egg whites, do not waste them. Be sure to check out my um, pavlova for two recipe up above. It is the perfect way to use up those egg whites. Then of course we're going to need a little bit of sugar and just a pinch of salt. And that is all you need to make a delicious creme brulee. All right, so let's take our, I'm using a cup and a quarter of heavy whipping cream. We're going to just pour it into our saucepan. 
get all of it out. And then we are going to take our vanilla bean and all those seeds that we scraped out and add them in with the cream. Now, if you're using vanilla extract or vanilla paste, you will not put that in with the cream, okay? You're gonna heat up just your cream. Give that a little stir around. And then we're gonna put this on the stove top and we're gonna heat it just until it is warm through. You do not wanna let this come to a boil, okay? Um, you just wanna heat it through until it is just starting to get some little bubbles around the edges. If you heat it to a boil, your milk and your um, creme brulee are gonna curdle and that's not good. All right, and for the other ingredients into a bowl, we're gonna take our three egg yolks and our sugar. We are gonna use a quarter cup of granulated sugar and just a pinch of salt. Now, if you're using vanilla paste or vanilla extract, go ahead and add a teaspoon of that in right now. And you just wanna whisk this together and you're gonna whisk it for a couple minutes because you want it to turn a little paler color in yellow. You wanna make sure all that sugar is dissolved and incorporated into the egg yolk. So just go ahead and get your little upper arm workout and mix this together. All right, we've got our milk or cream heated through and we did not let it boil our eggs and now what we're going to do is what's called tempering our eggs we're going to pour just about um, oh but before we do that i forgot we need to remove the vanilla bean pod out of the cream okay you don't want that all those little black specks are still going to be there that's great it's going to give it good flavor just take out the pot so then we're going to take our cream and do what i said is called tempering and add about a quarter cup and this is just going to slightly cook those eggs in there. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna prevent, um, I need to put this down on my counter, there we go, prevent us from getting any pieces of cooked egg in our creme brulee, which we don't want. If perchance you do, do see some little pieces of egg, you can just pour this through a strainer, and um, like a fine mesh strainer, and that will take care of it. Okay, we've got that milk in there, and now what we're gonna do is pour the rest of this cream. No, we're gonna pour this into the cream. <laughs> Get it going the right way. Here we go. There we go. Get that all in there. There we go. And you have your custard base now for your creme brulee. Now we're going to take our two ramekins and we want to divide this mixture evenly between the two ramekins. Now we also have our oven preheating to 300 degrees. Just put it in again. Those little black specks in there are just fine. We're going to make it delicious. Try to get it as evenly as you can because we do want this to cook evenly. Now, over on the stove over there, I've got a pot. I've been boiling some water. You're going to need some hot water and you're going to need a baking dish that both of these ramekins will fit in. And I'm going to go grab mine. All right, we got it. We're going to put these two ramekins in here. We're going to make a water bath. Okay, we want to bake this in a water bath, which is what's going to help it cook just a little bit more evenly and keep it nice and creamy. So then we're gonna take that hot water that we have brought to a boil. So the trick is as you're pouring this water in, you don't wanna splash it into the creme brulee and you want the water level to come up just about halfway on the ramekin. Okay, now it's ready to put in the oven. We're gonna bake it in our 300 degree oven for 40 minutes. And it's just going to set on the top, but it's still going to be jiggly. That is what you So after cooling for 10 minutes in the hot water bath, we're going to put it onto a baking rack, a cooling rack, and let it cool completely. And then we're going to refrigerate it. Now you want to let it stay in the refrigerator before serving it for at least two to four hours. I like to make it the day ahead of time and let it sit all night. And you can actually make this um, two days ahead of time and let it sit in the refrigerator until you are ready to serve it. So it is a perfect make ahead dessert. All right, I'm back. It's the next day. We are ready to torch our creme brulee and enjoy it. So now after you pulled out of the refrigerator, I've, there may be, if there's any condensation that has formed on top of the creme brulee, just take a, a napkin, a paper towel, and just kind of blot it just gently to, especially if there's any little like droplets of water or anything on there, you want to get rid of that. So now we're gonna put our sugar on. Now I like to use granulated sugar, but sometimes people will use raw sugar or brown sugar. The problem with that is one of the keys to know when your sugar is melting and ready is it's gonna turn brown, but if the sugar's already brown, it's a little bit harder to tell, but totally doable. But 
like I say, I like to use just regular old granulated sugar. And I'm gonna take about three fourths of a tablespoon and just gently sprinkle it over the top. And you wanna make sure that you cover the whole, oh, see, and I got a couple little blobs of sugar, so don't want that. Um, but go ahead and sprinkle it over and then you're gonna just take it and kind of turn it around so that you get all that sugar so you don't have any like um, thicker places of sugar that it's a nice even layer. Does that make sense? Okay, all right, there we go. So you can see it's all kind of absorbed in. There isn't just sugar laying on top of the sugar. All right, now let's do the other one. So I said, it, depending on the size, if you're using a smaller ramekin, you won't use quite as much sugar because you don't want it so thick that, you know, it takes forever to melt because then that'll start melting your custard below. All right, there we go. They're both ready to go. Now we're gonna take that kitchen torch. Now we did talk about if you don't have a kitchen torch in a few minutes, I'll kind of go over again how you can do that. But um, this is mine. I'll link to it down below. There we go. And you don't want it to be super, you want to adjust it so that it's kind of not full power, I guess, is what we should say. All right, and then we're gonna just take it and we're gonna hold it a few inches away and start to melt the sugar. Now, you wanna kinda, I do it on a cutting board so they don't accidentally torch my uh, kitchen counter. The sugar's just gonna nice, gentle around the whole area, try to do it nice and evenly and then you're gonna to start to see your sugar melting. Now, I like to get it where it's just nice and golden brown. I don't like it too brown because then it tastes a little burnt. So the trick is to get it nice and even. Okay, we're getting some bubbles here. I'll do a close up here so you can see it too. Um, my sugar's starting to melt because I can see it bubbling. All right, we got some brown spots coming now. All right, we're done torching and you can see nice and golden brown. Now you are gonna get some spots that are a little darker than others. That is totally okay. It's still going to taste delicious. Now when I serve it, now at this point, when after you've torched it, it has warmed up that custard layer underneath. Personally, I love to eat it when it is a warm, that warm custard and that crispy topping. So good, but if you prefer, you can pop it back in the refrigerator for 30 minutes or so to let that custard chill underneath. Now, you don't wanna leave it in the refrigerator for much longer than that because the longer it sits in the refrigerator, that sugar, um, our crispy sugar layer is gonna to start to soften and actually liquefy. So like if you put it in the refrigerator tomorrow, that it'll still taste delicious, but the sugar won't be crunchy anymore. So now I like to just garnish it a little bit with a few fresh berries, maybe a sprig of mint if you've got it, just to make it look a little prettier, however you like it. Oop, there we go. And now I'm gonna bring in my taste tester and see how we did. All right, so honestly, this is one of those desserts that I'd really rather not share because I could totally eat both of these. I love this creme brulee so much, but I'm feeling generous today, so I'm gonna share. So Jim, come on in, say hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. <laughs> All right. Hi, well, Leanne. Hi. <laughs> Let's see what you think of the creme brulee. Ooh, can you hear that crunch right through there? Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> so good. You're going to love it. Make it. Hey, thanks. Well, My taste buds are exploding. All right. Well, thank you for joining me in the kitchen today. Be sure to check out my other small batch dessert recipes by clicking down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Almost forgot to sh share with you how to do this if you're doing it in the broiler. What I would do is I would turn my broiler on and then put the creme brulee in right away. Don't let the broiler preheat. Let the creme brulee be in there as the broiler is preheating. Now, put the, if you're doing the two, put them in on a baking sheet. Oh, can you hear that? I got workmen in my basement. But put them on a cookie sheet because that's going to make it easier if you need to turn them or rotate them and put them under there, under the broiler, let the broiler preheat, it'll start to warm up and broil. Just watch it super carefully, don't walk away, don't get distracted, but um, it should work just fine. But if you can get your hands on a kitchen torch, get yourself a kitchen torch, super fun.